and I'd like to just introduce um, my next guest uh, from Mistral AI. Florian Bresson is the Chief Business Officer at Mistral AI. This is uh, one of Europe's promising uh, large language model AI companies, and I'm interested and fascinated to hear where this company is going next. Please welcome my guest, Florian Bresson, Chief Business Officer at Mistral AI. Hi, Florian. Hello, How are Arjun. You? Thank you for making the time. Uh, pleasure just, to be here. Just give us a very quick overview of, of Mistral AI. Uh, with pleasure. So, Mistral AI is a company founded by three French researchers mm -hmm. who worked at Google DeepMind, so a perfect transition, <laughs> yep. and Meta, and who last summer decided to launch their own company to work on foundational models. Mm. And so we have so far released three models, two open source and one commercial. Great. Um, talk to me about your business. What's the, what's the revenue strategy? What's the monetization strategy? How are you going to make money? <laughs> it's a great question, especially in my role. So yeah. we have two legs. Uh, one is a very strong commitment to open source. Mm -hmm. That's there to stay, uh, which also creates adoption and momentum. And then the enterprise version has a really even more efficient model, mm -hmm. two to three times more efficient, which means that companies, as they scale, will see big benefits on reducing the amount of infra infrastructure and compute they will need, which means lower cost and lower CO2 footprint, which is a big topic these days. Yeah, you mentioned open source there. There's a big debate at the moment within the sort of AI community, open source versus some of these more closed, closed models. Why is Mistral committed to, to open source? We think it's very important that this technology be accessible to all, mm. right? and that it's uh, developers, companies, individuals, scientists can take the technology, experiment with it, but also that companies have you know, specific enterprise needs, safety, guard railing, um, managing the infrastructure. So uh, we don't think it's an either or. We think that the combination of an open source approach and open enterprise is a very powerful mix. It also means that this will give companies a greater ability to customize the models, to fine tune them, mm. which is a, a great way to also make them even more efficient. In the same spirit of fit to purpose and really reducing the footprint of the models to get the best outcomes. And, and of course, AI has taken over Davos this year. Um, it seems so. And, and everyone wants to talk about it. In terms of Mistral's business and your growth this year, can you give me any idea about what kind of growth you're expecting to see? I think it's fair to say we can talk about hyper growth. Mm. And we are seeing, I'd say, broad interest, but particular interest in sectors that are more sensitive. So mm -hmm. financial services, banking, insurance, airspace and defense, public sector, and then um, what is sometimes known, sorry for the jargon, as uh, critical services operators. So telcos, utilities, especially for networks. Mm. In, in terms of, of European firms like yourself, um, versus the big American firms. There's a big debate always. Can, can European firms compete uh, with their US uh, and Chinese peers at this point? Do you think you, you have a shot against the Googles and Microsofts of this world? We definitely think we do. <laughs> Our investors who are great uh, backers think we do. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is, uh, this is not just competition. This is an ecosystem. And when we think about enterprise customers, obviously they're gonna want to use the models through cloud. Um, which is where they've been investing a lot for their cloud migrations, making the data safe. So with us, they have the ability to bring the model to their cloud and to their data. Yeah. And so we, we have a partnership with Microsoft Azure. Uh, we will be up very soon. Mistral, model as a service, we're very proud of that. We also have a partnership with uh, Google Cloud. So we really see this as a you know, lively ecosystem where no company, given the importance of this technology, will want to rely on a single provider, a single source. And also, as we think about the, the range of use cases, you know, some are simple, some are very sophisticated, we believe that there is space for a broad set of models. Mm. To be clear, we want to offer you know, that broad range, and we want to have, we, we are delivering models. Uh, today, our, our commercial model, uh, we're not great at marketing, it's called Mistral Medium, <laughs> is already the world's second best model right after GPT-4, right? So we believe that from a tech, a science point of view, Europe has great scientists and talent, we have the ingredient, and that we are also going to collaborate with the rest of the ecosystem. Yeah. You mentioned your investors uh, as well. You raised a lot of money last year. 
at a time where you didn't have a lot of product and it raised a lot of eyebrows uh, at the time. Are you worried there's just too much hype uh, right now in the industry? Well, I mean, you, you can argue, you know, why, why did investors uh, make that initial bet? And we thank them for it, mm. uh, you know, light speed. Um, and it, it's quite simple. I mean, this is a science game. And our three founders had been part and of the Google DeepMind story, of the Meta Llama story. We now have more than half of the team that developed the Llama model that came over to Mistral. So that was the track record. And you know, lo and behold, uh, September 27 when, was when we released Mistral 7 billion parameters, which was at the time already you know, better than models twice its size. And in December, uh, Mistral 78X, uh, so we're not uh, great at marketing, as I mentioned, <laughs> but it, which is a, a unique technology, the sparse mixture of experts that only OpenAI also masters, came out and it's stronger than Lama 2, 70 billion parameters. So we can, we can just see the track record and we believe that it's important to get the funding. This is a, a tight race, we need the, we need the fuel, uh, but we believe that as long as you know, companies like us deliver, uh, there's a, a lot of runway and, and headroom to grow. Are, are you looking for more funding this year? I think for now, we're, we have our head down, we're well funded, uh, we have models already you know, out that we're taking to the market, mm -hmm. we have more models coming soon, I can't say too much, but they'll be even cooler, even larger, and that's both, by the way, on the commercial side, the enterprise side, and the open source side. Yep. So we're gonna keep our head down, and you know, obviously we're there not just to build great models, but to build a sustainable business. So part of our funding will come through the adoption of enterprise as we, as we grow in this market. What's the business's key priorities for 2024? Um, I would say given we're still fairly small mm -hmm. compared to some of our you know, US, US uh, peers and friends, we're trying to find situations on the enterprise side where there's enough conviction maturity already in terms of adoption mm -hmm. um, so that we can, we can help these initial customers go to scale in production. And it struck me this week in Davos, there's really been you know, 2022, you know the story, chat GPT, discovery, 2023, a thousand flowers and POCs, proof of concept blooming everywhere. I think 2024 is about you know, starting to move to production yeah. and our goal as a business is to find you know, companies, governments that are moving and partners that are, that are committed to moving to scale already while continuing to you know, jointly evangelize this market. And of course you're, as I mentioned, a European company and the EU is uh, on its way and it has passed the EU AI Act, um, you know, a first of its kind regulation really globally. Um, what's your view towards it? Are you happy with it? There's been so, a lot of criticisms of it. <laughs> we welcome regulation in this space. I think it's, it's, it's important, shouldn't be the Wild West. Mm. With this said, we, we've respectfully expressed the point of view, which is backed by um, a few people like Emmanuel Macron. We were here together on this stage yesterday that we think it's more important to regulate the applications yeah. uh, than it is to regulate the fundamental technology itself, mm. uh, which is moving very, very fast, as you know. So we are staying very close to this topic. Um, you're right that the AI Act is now in motion, but there's still a lot of fine print on the implementation. And we are, as an industry participant, we'd love, we will continue to participate to make sure that the, the regulation ensures a safe space, but it also doesn't stifle innovation. Yeah, and what, what, are you, what are you hoping as the details get hashed out? Um, well, well, we think this should be a balancing act and that, you know, that we, we, it should be, it would be better to avoid sort of hard coding some thresholds uh, that are linked to, for example, computing power, yeah. because the needle there is moving very, very fast. So we think there's a risk that, you know, the regulation could become obsolete very quickly. We'd love something that's a bit more, you know, um, adapted to the, to the speed of the market. Florian, we've got about 20 seconds left. So just sum up for us, 2024, Mistral AI's key priority. So finding the right partners for us to scale and to demonstrate you know, with governments, with enterprise and with the open source community, the huge potential for good of this Gen AI technology that we're all so excited about. 
Great, Florian. Thank you so much for your insights. It's a pleasure to meet you Arjun, and catch up you. with you. Florian Bressendale, the Chief Business Officer at Mistral AI.